Boop is jealous of his wife's ex. I am not op. Original post by you, thrower of 484 UEI in our relationship advice. Trigger warning. Domestic abuse. Less than. An NBSP. My wife said something strange about her ex. And it's really getting to me. I'm 31M. She's 31F. The 19th of March 2020. My wife and I have been married for four years. I will call her Abby. We love each other. Have a great marriage. And are talking about having kids soon. I really don't have any complaints. But. Before Abby met me. She was with a guy. Brock. For two years. She said she was madly in love with him but had to leave him because he was verbally abusive. Shortly after she left Brock. She met me. And the rest is history. I thought it went without saying that Abby had forgotten about Brock. However. There have been some odd things that she has said about him that make me nervous. Or even a little jealous. She once told me that Brock was so good looking that she had a hard time making eye contact. This was in the context of a conversation about why she put up with his abuse for so long. And when I replayed what she said. She's never said that I was too good looking to look at. It's almost like she said Brock was more attractive. And it hurt. I didn't bring this up though because she sometimes gets upset when I mention Brock. There's also been a few times where she mentioned something that Brock used to do. And she's have this wistful look on her face. Almost like she was still enamored with him. This wasn't 100% clear though and it didn't happen often so I let it slide. I have told Abby in the past that I felt a little jealous because Brock seemed like a more attractive man than me. But she assured me that she didn't think of him that way and that she loved me. All this being said, my wife said something a bit odd about Brock two nights ago. And it's been messing with my head. We were sitting on the couch watching Netflix. And Abby had been drinking a bit. We somehow got on the subject of feet. And how we both thought feet were gross and didn't understand why some people liked feet. I held my bare foot up and said something like, can you imagine someone liking my feet? I have gross feet. Abby laughed and agreed that my feet were gross. This wasn't particularly hurtful. Her tone was playful. Then after a few seconds. Abby said, the only person's feet I would ever consider attractive is Brock's feet. He had the most beautiful feet. As you can imagine. This killed the conversation. But Abby didn't seem to notice. She was staring off into space. I just went back to watching TV. The next morning, when we woke up, she acted like nothing happened. And maybe she really didn't remember. Because she was drunk. And it was an offhand remark. But it's been bugging me for the past couple of days. Not just because it was about Brock. But because my feet were ugly. Then said his were beautiful. Maybe it's silly but it made me feel really insecure and jealous. Abby has noticed that something is off about me. She asked earlier this morning if something is wrong. I denied it, but, I don't think I can just forget about this like I want to. I'm thinking I will need to sit down with her and talk about the Brock situation. We are cooped up together for the next two weeks at least so that makes things complicated. It's not like one of us can leave if the conversation goes sour. And I hope it doesn't come to that. But, any advice on how to broach this subject? Should I broach it at all? An NBSP. Update. My wife said something strange about her ex. And it's really getting to me. I'm 31M. She's 31F. The 22nd of March 2020. TL. D or my wife occasionally talks about her ex as though she misses him. And then the other night she said he was the only guy she ever knew with beautiful feet. Yeah. Weird but also hurtful towards me and my nasty feet. So I actually tried to post this the very next morning, while replies to my first post were still streaming in, because I talked to Abby almost immediately and consider the issue largely settled. Automod deleted it so I've had to wait a couple days.
In hindsight I'm glad I've had to wait because it gave me more time to consider the responses I received. First of all, I wanted to thank everyone who responded yesterday. Unfortunately I did receive a bit of bizarre advice a number of users called my wife an alpha widow. Still others told me to divorce her immediately because she must be cheating. I had a few users calling my wife a bitch. This was a sobering reminder that anonymous internet people don't understand the nuances of my marriage. And people tend to project their own insecurities onto other people's situations. So I'd advise anyone considering posting here use discretion in what advice you take. Just to get ahead of some of the speculation. Brock has lived in South Korea for two years. He is prohibited by a court order from contacting Abby. And I have open access to her DMs anyway. If she were cheating, I'd be the first to know. I also received some great advice about trauma bonding and recovering from abusive exes. These responses were the most helpful. All this said, here's what I posted about that night. I was sitting on the bed last night, just kinda brooding. When Abby came in, she sat on the bed next to me and looked at me. She must have known something was up because I haven't been myself these last few days and our bedroom has been dead since the feet comment. Abby asked me if everything was okay. I gave her a weary smile and said no. I suppose not. She frowned and asked if we could talk about it. I sighed heavily and was quiet for a few moments. Abby didn't look nervous or defensive. She looked genuinely concerned. So I figured she must not be aware of how hurtful her Brock comments have been. And I should just be honest. I started by asking if she was willing to be 100% honest with me. She said that she was. So then I asked if she's happy being married to me. And if she'd prefer being with someone else instead. She seemed a little taken aback by the question and said she would never dream of marrying someone else. My voice was shaking the whole time and Abby looked like she was ready to cry. 2. Finally I lay everything out. I tell Abby that a few nights ago, we were talking about feet, and she had said that my feet were gross. But Brock's feet were, beautiful. I said maybe it sounds really silly and dumb but that comment made me feel really ugly and it broke my heart. She gasped and started crying at this point. I said there's been a few other times where she mentioned Brock and acted like she really missed him. Because she sounded enamored when she talked about him. I said I think that Brock was probably a lot more attractive than me and she would have preferred. Staying with him over me. Abby cried for long time before she was able to say anything. It was probably only two minutes but it felt like forever. She said she didn't realize that she was mentioning Brock that way and upsetting me so much. She said she couldn't imagine marrying anyone else but me. I said, even though I'm uglier than Brock? And she started crying again. Like really bawling. After she pulled herself together again she admitted that Brock was a very attractive man. And that she had been infatuated with him. It seemed extremely difficult for her to get those words out. But Brock had also been controlling and incredibly cruel. She never felt safe or at ease with him. But she did feel safe with me. She said she had married M.E. And wanted children with M.E. And that she had never even dreamed of marrying Brock. Let alone having kids with him. Then we talked about some deeper more personal stuff that I'd rather not go into here. I did mention some of the trauma bonding stuff that some Redditors had mentioned last night. And Abby admitted that she had felt addicted to the drama while she was with Brock. She agreed to talk with her counselor about her unresolved issues with that past relationship. The conversation took well over an hour and we both cried a lot. But I did feel much better afterwards. We cuddled for a while before I joked that I guess Abby was stuck with my nasty feet for life. She took my head in her hands and said she thought I had the most beautiful feet in the world. Because they were mine. We made out and made love for the first time in a week. 
Maybe that's TMI but I figured a lot of folks here would appreciate a happy ending. So, I guess the issue is largely settled. I do think that maybe I overreacted a little. But my feelings at being inadvertently made to feel less attractive were real. I'm glad I didn't second guess my emotions and suppress them. Thank you to everyone who offered advice in the original thread. It seems the situation has been resolved. Edit. Though I will add that I still feel a little sad that I am not as attractive as Abby's ex. Not because I'm jealous but because I want to be the best she's ever had in every way. Including physically. But I guess I simply have to make peace with the fact that I'm not the most attractive guy Abby has been with. I suppose a lot of us have to make peace with that. Huh? Edit 2. I appreciate all your kind words. I would like to add that I do not consider the situation magically over. But I count it as resolved because Abby and I are both moving in the right direction and actively working on fixing this. I would also like to add that even with this positive update, I am seeing some disappointing comments. Users saying that I'm immature, that my wife is definitely totally cheating on me, that I am a troll making this whole thing up because my writing style isn't very good, that this sub is a terrible place to share a serious marital issue, and I shouldn't have done it, etc etc. I also a few interesting PMs trying to rope me into some kind of anti-woman community. And one instructing me to kill myself. I've read that Reddit can be toxic but this has been eye-opening. I do want to post an update maybe a month down the road. But I do think in light of all this negativity, that maybe I will just leave things here. There is a lot that I did not post here. And I mean a lot. I guess it's understandable that some people are treating this as their blank canvas to project their own insecurities. Thank you to everyone who provided positive input and constructive criticism. An NBSP. Reminder I am not the original poster. All I can focus on is that on March 19th, 2020. Oop says, we are cooped up together for the next two weeks at least, and then thinking about what was actually about to happen to them, us. Glad things seem better for these two though. The Here's something else to consider. You probably would not find my wife overly attractive. We are no longer spring chickens. But in the morning there's no sight that I would rather see when I wake up than her. When I look at her. I see everything that we have been through together. How we have grown together. That is true beauty. You just don't get any better than that. She is more appealing to me than anyone else could possibly be. So don't worry. Ugly feet can be very endearing and can become precious to your partner. Feeling that her ex was so attractive she couldn't look at him could have been part of the trauma. She just wasn't able to identity. She probably was made to feel like she didn't deserve him. And this is how it translated in her head. I'm glad they're working it out. It can be so hard to go from an abusive relationship to a good one. And it takes patience. Hope it goes easier for them from here out. God bless honest communication. Your perception becomes your reality even if it's not reality. It sounds like that is a huge part of what happened here. For anyone else who doesn't know what an alpha widow is and is afraid to look it up. It's as incel as you'd think. Alpha widow. A woman. Usually with average sexual market value. SMV. Who sleeps with a high sexual market value male. AKA the alpha male. Who does not wish to have a long-term relationship with the woman? The woman views the alpha male as superior to most, if not all, of the other men pursuing her. And so the woman continues to lust after the alpha male she cannot have. Sacrificing future long-term relationships with lower SMV men. Making her a widow. In a sense. To the original alpha male. I keep imaging Brock from Pokemon or Brock the Stanford Rapist, there are no in-between. 
Another good case of communication and therapy please. It sounds so simple and yet it's clearly not. However, she definitely has a lot of work to do in regards to her ex. Not one single day has ever gone by that I've thought of my abusive ex as anything less than a horrid abuser, and certainly never casually complimented him over my current husband. I traded up big time, and I hope she knows she did too. I thought trauma bond, two paragraphs in. I am glad op got genuine and insightful advice. There are some redditors that just like to be abusive dicks but the helpful voices usually outweigh the abusive ones. I would never, in a million years, compare any aspect of my wife unfavorably to an ex. I don't understand why people do this. I get that it's honest, but there's no upside to it. My wife is my best everything. End of story. We love good healthy communication in this house. I'm glad he was able to talk about his feelings and that she was so receptive to how he felt. I say this is probably best case scenario although. I'd probably be 50 levels of hurt if someone told me I was not the prettiest they had ever been with. Me need therapy. Edit. Forgot to add a word. I'm glad they worked through it but her comments were needlessly cruel. She can feel however she wants but there is never a productive reason to negatively compare your partner to an ex right to their face. Especially without a but. It was simply hurtful and I don't know if they've gotten to the root of why she did it repeatedly. Oop didn't overreact at all. Who the hell talks about their ex like that in front of their so? This would make anyone insecure. In some relationships, you emotionally have the most amazing highs with this person. The adrenaline is pumping and there is nowhere in the world you would rather be. But also these kinds of relationships come with the lowest lows. They ruin your self-esteem and put you in a bad place. The other thing that happens is you find it difficult to forget the highs. Even if the new person you are with is amazing and you are having a great life together. You know the new person is the person that you love the most and suits you best but the memories of the doomed relationship sometimes creep out. Therapy is good to realize that long term. You need someone who comes with a little of the highs and no lows. Sometimes it's hard when you second guess how you feel. When you think if they're valid enough. Just for anyone who finds themselves in the wife's shoes accidentally. There are very, very few people who take it the right way when you tell them you feel safe with them because no one wants to be the safe choice. It comes off as my last partner was better than you in every way except that they were a insert whatever it asshole thing they did to me. So I settled for the safe option. You. Why would you discuss how attractive your ex was with your new partner? Just. Dot why? This sounds a lot different than saying, he was handsome. But it didn't make up for his violence or reprehensible personality. This sounds like the wife. Still hasn't resolved her feelings for this guy. And should probably seek therapy. My ex of 25 years ago was stunning physically. But he was such a poss. It was odd. The longer and dated him the less attractive he was. Until I used to look at him and think how the hell was I attracted to him. I always think of the expression beauty is skin deep but ugly goes right to the bone. And he was ugly. The best thing I ever did was leave him and not look back. I took an avo out on him and eventually through his own stupidity he was deported from Australia and not allowed to return. For people who wonder how women get involved with foots like that let me explain. They are shifty. They know they have to hide their true nature until later in the relationship when it's harder to leave. No woman would date them if they were like that to start with. My best advice from this is go slow when you start to date someone. Listen to how they talk about, treat the ex. Because that's how they really feel about women. 
Someone who wants to rush into things may be afraid that if you go slow at the beginning you'll work out what they're really like. And as my therapist says, if he seems too good to be true, he usually is. Maybe I'm just bitter? But what is with glaring issues that never get solved before marriage? I just don't understand it at all. If your partner keeps bringing up an ex, don't just stuff your feelings down because something is up and it's worth working through if you've decided you want to marry that person. Can we just start a new thing of everyone going to couples counseling or retreats or something to put everything to rest before they take the next step in their relationship? Why do they think just going into the marriage things will disappear? Edit. Also bugs me that the wife never once considered it would bother her husband to keep bringing up her ex randomly? That's only the parts we saw. She must have been thinking about her ex even more than that and never once questioned therapy or a talk with her husband? Ah. But I guess I simply have to make peace with the fact that I'm not the most attractive guy Abby has been with. I suppose a lot of us have to make peace with that. Huh? Oop doesn't realize that your life partner is supposed to make you feel like the most attractive person. Can you imagine going around thinking that you're someone else's subpar choice? If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.